I love architecture, um, but it was the fault of UC Berkeley, uh, where I studied my, when I got my master's in architecture, it was their fault that they had such great diverse student body and that I met a couple of other Chicano students that wanted to do sketch comedy. And that is what happened to me is I got the bug, uh, the performing bug and started touring uh, with a group called Chicano Secret Service, which I co-founded. And uh, we ended up touring all over the country, doing theater runs, and uh, stu even studying with um, Luis Valdez and El Teatro Campesino in Northern California. And uh, I said, I think I was meant to be an artist, you know. I also did uh, zines uh, with a friend uh, that I met there from Berkeley. Uh, and I started cartooning in those. I had already been the editorial cartoonist for my college paper at San Diego State uh, and then had discovered architecture, went off to Berkeley, and then rediscovered my love for art and comics and comedy and satire, basically. So I have no regrets. Um, I completely, I grew up uh, on the border in San Diego and Tijuana and, you know, people that live on the border uh, and even to this day with the militarized border and everything still go back and forth all the time. And so I never really lost contact with, you know, the, the Mexican part of my background uh, and I would do even more trips into Mexico. And so I picked up, you know, all the pop imagery from Mexico, like Mexican wrestlers, Lucha Libre. Uh, my mom would take me to go see day-long matinees of, uh, of Mexican wrestling movies from the 70s. Uh, you know, they were like Mexican superheroes, you know. They're, they were my Marvel in D.C., you know. Uh, and so all that stuff really stuck to me. And uh, it's just natural to use, you know, the, those things... I uh, use it in, to this day in in my work. Um, and then also, because I think representation is super important. I mean, I, I tried to, you know, make that happen in, in any other, you know, projects that I have. Because I remember being that little kid and looking at the Sunday comics and not seeing anybody that looked like me except for, you know, one comic strip that was called Gordo, uh, and uh, which was like the first... Latino comic strip in the United States uh, and uh, it was nationally syndicated, it was drawn by a Mexican-American from, from Tucson who worked for Disney and Warner Brothers as an animator. We, you know, we have more stuff in, in American pop culture that's Latino these days, but still there's not enough, I think, and when kids can see themselves reflected, it's just, it's not even just, you know, it's, it's more, you know, you just want to feel normal, you know. And, uh, and so that's why I think it's important to make these images, you know, that, that people can relate to or that even, you know, I always say I draw this stuff to amuse myself. So I think if, if I can amuse myself and uh, feel true to myself, then I think it, it's okay, you know, to, to use all that. As far as the borders between personal and political, I mean, it's, that's, you know, I think all good literature is that, you know, literature and art is personal stuff that, you know, the artist pulls from and shares, you know, with, with the rest of the world. And uh, some people can relate to it more than others, and that's fine, you know, with me, uh, because I, I look at art and, and see things that are not from my experience, and uh, I can relate to it on a, on a human level, at least. You know, my whole experience uh, of living on the border and, uh, and being a politicized, you know, Mexican-American or a Chicano, um, and, and from no, knowing you know, and having studied that history, too, uh, I feel like it's, you know, really important to try to bring that 
to people that are, you know, our school system uh, does not teach, you know, a, a lot of real history uh, on an elementary, you know, on a basic level. So I feel like it's my job to, you know, as someone that has studied it or that has lived it, to bring it out to the general public. So um, sometimes there is strange situations where people will misread what I'm drawing because of there, there are stereotypes out there about, you know, Mexican people. Uh, and so if I draw, for instance, you know, the most popular character in my comic strip is Taco Cart Guy. And because everybody, everyone loves tacos, right? So he's a street vendor. You know, and some people actually look at that and go, why do you promote racist stereotypes about Mexico? I'm like, can't I draw an actual person that exists who's a guy on my corner that sells tacos? You know, like, there's nothing wrong, inherently wrong with that guy. You know, don't demonize him. Uh, in my mind, it's like a real, you know, person. Um, and so... Um, that is in the character portrayals in my comic strip in La Cucaracha. You know, it's, it gets dicey. You know, people will, will sometimes people see, read, read, and I mean read visually a, 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 a cartoon and uh, think it is always negative. You know, people think that caricatures are negative. They're, they're not, you know, they just draw, you know, draw, the, they portray an essence of someone or something. Of course, when it's people of color, then you start, you know, the, the greater culture starts questioning, you know, what is that? You know, they don't understand what, you know, because also, you know, our appearance in pop culture it could be more. There could be a lot more uh, portrayals of us uh, in, uh, in film and television. To me, a victory is almost just showing a Mexican-American character or Latino character in a situation, yeah, that not necessarily uh, there's, you know, no stereotypical situation around it. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you want to draw, a, a, I want to draw a little brown kid. And that's, you know, that's like a, a, a bullseye for me. You know, I think just presenting that kid as a regular kid is, is, is great, you know, and, uh, I put a lot of thought in, into what I do with each character because of that. Uh, yeah, the comics pages has like this, uh, kind of a, a lot of American so society has these, uh, this rule, I call it the, the rule of one. You know, if there's, like the one black comic strip, that's it. We're good. You know, the comics page is like, well, we got this strip. We got the one Latino comic strip. There's really only two in the whole country. There's uh, La Cucaracha and a strip called Baldo. And it's like a family, more of a family-oriented strip. And it's been, we both launched around the same time. Uh, and... Uh, there hasn't really been anything else in 14 years, you know, it's, it's sad. So as one of the few uh, nationally syndicated cartoonists that happen to be Latino, yeah, it's, uh, uh, I, I take my responsibility seriously and I try to, you know, give back. Uh, I try to, pr you know, I try to promote other young cartoonists uh, and give them, uh, you know, uh, sh share some attention with them um, and encourage them uh, because we need to have uh, more. And 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 I just you know I just try to be thoughtful about my my work and uh, and I try to work uh, super hard and work ten times harder than the next guy uh, because yeah you know I don't want people to say you know me you know. Mexican American cartoonists are lazy because that guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I've I've learned a uh, a lot that uh, just you know, 
just because you're on uh, TV, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful. <laughs> you know, it's, our show got canceled after one season. Uh, there was not a lot of support uh, from uh, in advertising from the network for whatever reason. So, but what somebody somebody told me uh, was, uh, if you haven't been canceled, you're not really in Hollywood. So. Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> I got a big cancellation. Um, and that's, that's what uh, show business is a curious business because you can kind of fail upward a, a whole lot, you know. And it's just, you know, not every show can live forever. Uh, so you just kind of move on. And from what I've learned from uh, working for uh, Pixar and consulting with them is, um, I mean, again, that, that was... My my desire to work on that was really uh, to make sure that we do that movie right. That that movie comes out, you know, and little little Mexican American kids are going to see that movie for generations, you know. And it's it can't be a poor representation; uh, it has to be a good one, you know. Uh, and uh, a, it's a project where all, mo all my pretty much all my ideals were met, you know. Good casting, good music, authentic, uh, you know, storyline, and uh, there's a little dash of, uh, you know, the pixie dust there, but uh, it's a fantasy uh, movie. But the representation is really positive uh, and good. And so, um, yeah, I'm learning to work and play with others, and I hope that other, other I think other artists are way better suited at it than I am. They're the younger generation. They, they, they've grown up you know, with social media and being exposed, even, you know, even if it's just through a phone, but you get exposed to a lot of people. Both projects, uh, no, there's lots of Latinos involved in, in Border Town. Uh, I was one of five uh, writers, five Latino writers that were uh, on board with that, which is, I think, a world record for any American primetime show that's ever happened, even up, up to today. I mean, it was the first time that uh, there was an animated Latino family, uh, Mexican family on, on American primetime television or American television at all. Uh, and we had, you know, great casting and we had, uh, you know, Mexican, Mexican American voice talent and Latino voice talent on it. I think it was like a really groundbreaking thing. And uh, on, the, on the Pixar project, there's, uh, I'm a, a part of a team of three uh, consultants and we brought in people from the community to see the film, to advise us. You know, we brought in, you know, playwright uh, Luis Valdez, uh, who did Zoot Suit and uh, um, La, uh, did La Bamba. Um, and, uh, you know, we brought in uh, just, you know, lots of local artists and, you know, made sure that they got hired for the projects to do the books and the merchandise and as, as much as possible. Uh, and so, uh, uh, but it was, it was, it was, it was a kind of a bigger team because there are people at Pixar that are, are Latinos that are, uh, rose up through the ranks to work on, on this project, you know, and the character designer, the, the head writer is now the co-director and, and those are two young, uh, Mexican Americans. Uh, yeah, I, I think that the future for Latinos of those projects is it's still going to be moving slow. I mean, it. I've been at this for you know 25 years, being a political advocate for inclusivity and representation, and it, not much has changed. I mean, this this year was one of the least diverse TV seasons that we've had for new new shows. There's one here and one there, but it's just like the, it's lip service. You know, they're still playing that game. So um, we have to have projects that succeed. You know, like. Uh, for me, Border Town succeeded in that the writing is excellent uh, and uh, it's hilarious and it's still living there on Netflix and you can see it and watch it uh, and hopefully it'll inspire other people. It ins it's inspired me to write another show uh, and, and go pitch it to the networks. Um, and, and I, you know, this Pixar movie is the first, uh, you know, all Latino, I think, all ethnic movie that Pixar has ever done, unless you count dinosaurs as minorities, right? Um, but uh, so 
I mean, this is going to be a groundbreaking movie. It's a movie that's done it all right, 